Soy Ricardo Varela here from Latino Rebels and welcome to Latino Rebels Live. We're in Los Angeles, the city of angels, and we're super excited to be here because we have another great show with another exciting guest. But first, because if you are a fan of this show, you know that I have an amazingly awesome co-host sitting right next to me. Hello, Melina Bobadilla. I didn't go with four names this time. That's is okay. that okay? Yeah, that's fine. The energy is still here, right? The presence. <laughs> yes. The, it's still vibes. Yeah. Hi, Julio. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy. Welcome to my city, first of all. Oh, I love your city. Born, raised, always here. Mm. Love LA. Um, I think LA loves you too. I hope they do. It gives you a new glow. <laughs> yes. You see me? Like, well, it's nice because we're doing this, you know, around the start of winter and I'm in the Northeast, so, yeah. so I'm, you know, the sun is just really LA amazing. LA is like, seasons? <laughs> what are seasons? <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. I think uh, folks are really gonna love our show. And I know everyone always says that, but like, honestly, we bring you quality, fun, vivacious, charismatic guests. And a really amazing co-host. Oh yeah. <laughs> that are not and modest. We're not modest. No, uh, no, Don't that be we're modest. Not. Like, it's why okay should not I be modest? modest? Exactly, right? don't be modest. I mean, I don't know. There's only 5.7% of <laughs> roles that people like me get on screen. So yeah. like, I'm gonna be modest? No, don't, no, do honey. not be modest. So listen, <laughs> I know. I get to introduce our next guest, who I consider this amazing independent creator. She has a great podcast with Dios FM called Locatora Radio. And she just launched a new podcast called Marihuanera which Melina likes to also call a... Podcast. A podcast for potheads. <laughs> Thank you, Melina. You're welcome, Julio. Um, <laughs> here, we, here is Mala Munoz. Welcome to the show. We're so Thank excited. You. I like you. You're on brand. We want to talk to you about um, independent creators, also your, your podcast, Locatora, but also Marihuanera. Um, yeah. because, and also just this notion of like women and Latinas and cannabis, which is, you know, when you think about marijuana and Latino, about it a lot. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. you know, Latino families, it's not like something that was at the dinner table, was it like growing up? In not at my <laughs> dinner table. <laughs> so, so where did the fascination with, with the pot begin for you? Well, um, I feel like being a marihuanera is part of my culture. Like as a Chicana, as a Mexican American from Southern California, this is my fucking heritage, bro. Like, this I'm is, sorry. It's roots, okay? <laughs> These are my roots. It is roots, yeah. These are my roots. There's so many great marihuaneros, marihuaneras that came before me. Yeah. Famous, you know, civilians, everyday people. And I have always felt like there's something interesting about this pothead culture. And big fan of Cheech Marine, big fan of oh, Cheech yeah. and Chong. Yeah. And you know, as a young person, I tried smoking a cigarette and I hated it. I smoked weed and I loved it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> natural choice, I think, right there. Yeah, <laughs> like super natural, you know? And so um, as I got older in college, in my 20s, working, living, dating, cannabis just became a big part of my life. Mm. First, socially with friends, with homegirls. There was a group of girls that I lived with in college at Tufts, mm -hmm. and we lived in the Latino culture house called La Casa. Shout out La Casa. <laughs> <laughs> Medford, Massachusetts Healthy. in the house. <laughs> shout out you, know, wow. you know I had to say that. Shout out Medford. Y'all got a lot of strong <laughs> yeah. pro-Massachusetts energy. I mean, I know we're on the West Coast, but we're repping, we're repping, North <laughs> we're repping Southeast yeah. Massachusetts. Let's go. Shout out Somerville. Shout out Medford. <laughs> this is truly <laughs> all them, but Melina's I support like, you. I support what you. What are you talking about? Continue. <laughs> Yo te apoyo. Thank you. So I lived in the Latino culture house called La Casa, and the, the Mexican and Central American contingent was small. Mm. Yeah. We were kind of um, like a rarity in mm. some yeah, ways. Yeah, it was up, I'm sure it was like up more Puerto Ricans. And, You're niche yeah. Latina. Yes. We were yeah. niche at the yeah. time. Yeah, at the yeah. time. At the time and in the mm -hmm. space. Yeah. And <laughs> niche Latina, <laughs> like it. You know? <laughs> and, um, and I love attention. So for me, I'm like, this Did is you? fun because I'm a novelty. <laughs> I'm a novelty, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat this up. But I had friends and lived with friends who were like these really cool girls from New York, from the Bronx, from Harlem, um, from Washington Heights, and they were smoking weed. And so I would smoke with them. When I graduated, I came home and I had this boyfriend. Um, <laughs> 
we don't like to talk about him, but he comes up for like reasons like this, yeah. right? Because he was a big part of my life and it was with him that I really started to like smoke heavy. Mm. Okay. You know, he started introducing me to strains and to like tinctures and to edibles. And so I began to expand like my knowledge of mm. cannabis. I had to get rid of him. We had to break up. Goodbye. I had he to did, get rid of was him. good for one thing. Yeah. He thank, knows, you. thank you, next. Goodbye. <laughs> Sometimes people are for a time and for a season. And I learned a lot from him. And he also kind of got me way more into my social media grind. Oh. I was bullshitting a lot. Oh. Bullshitting, bullshitting on Twitter and on Instagram. So that's where, the, because I, I think of you as a wise social media person on Twitter. At least I love reading I, when I, I When I introduced you, you, I forgot to tell you, I should have said, like, you know, wise social media practitioner like you you, oh, you drop some like social media maven. so so that's where you got yes. that too so so you yes. kind of change your social media game because of your ex-boyfriend as well he, he kind of was doing his own thing with social media and with his music and throwing parties and really in nightlife yeah. and he started to like take pictures of me and i would post them and then i was like okay this is like a thing that's happening here like people are liking these photos my follower count is increasing I'm gonna stick to, cause I was changing my handles. I started out as Sazon Completa and then I changed to all these different things. And then one day my friend Lori and then my ex at the time were like, if you stick to one thing, like call yourself one thing, yeah. we're gonna post photos, like think about what it is that you're posting because people seem to be responding, mm. you know? So I was like, okay, there's something here. So let me try a little bit. Um, but then when I broke up with him, I kept going with my social media. I kept going with the podcasting. We were already podcasting by then. Yeah. But I realized I didn't know how to light a fucking lighter. Cause Mala. this fool had been lighting all my shit for me for years. And then before that, my friends were lighting my so shit for was, me. Was it like a bad period where you were like, what do I do? Oh my God. Were you lighting them on the stove? <laughs> like what was, yeah, were you like creating like getting fire? a rock and You twigs? were like doing this, like, was it like. <laughs> Obsidian, right. Yeah. I had ancestral. <laughs> ancestral knowledge, ancestral Good. knowledge. No, I, I realized, wow, I've never picked up weed myself. I've never prepared a pipe myself or rolled a joint or a blunt myself. Like I was casually smoking and I was baby. So everybody was taking care of me and bringing me weed and, and lighting it up for me. So it was a journey of like self-discovery. Like <laughs> what's my relationship to cannabis? Nice. What kind of marijuana like do I want to be in the world? Yes. I had to build myself. And now I'm the marijuanera that you see today. Yeah, la mera marijuanera. Yeah. And I want to talk like specifically about the words because words have power, as yeah. we know. Yeah, yeah. And you could have been pop princess. You yeah. could have been weed Wendy or <laughs> something else. That's no, but like, like if your name was Wendy. 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 Anyway, yeah, you see where I'm going here. You chose yeah, yeah. marijuanera. Yeah. Yeah. And that carries a certain energy, especially in our communities. And the history I, of the I, word. Yeah, and every time like, I used to hear it, I just, it would like yeah. come with a regaño, right? Mm. But tell us about how you relate to that word and why that word is what you chose to call your podcast. Yes, yeah. I love badly behaved women. So do I. I love. That's why this works. I love Las Malas. <laughs> my middle name is Maria, and when I wanted to choose like my stage name, I'm like, I need to be the anti-Maria. I want to espouse and embody and embrace all the opposite. If the virgin whore dichotomy exists and we know it exists, yeah. I'm going to occupy the whore side of the dichotomy because they're both there. And this seems to be open right now. <laughs> Let me slide in. So I call myself Mala. Um, our flagship podcast is Locatora Radio. Right. And it's a play on the word locutor. Right. And after we did the, the Latino USA, the spotlight. Oh, yeah, yeah, we spotlighted I know you on Latino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you spotlighted Locatora Radio. And it was funny because we got a ton of emails from people. They're like, that's not how you spell locutor. You misspelled it. Oh, so like no our, es locatora. Our, yeah, so our audience was a little bit like, what is going on? Which yeah. I like it because it was yes. a little disruptive. So And I think that's the goal, right? So yeah. we we took locutor and we flipped it and we added an A and we made it locatora. And our whole idea was like, well, when women uh, talk about abuse or when we talk about corruption or we talk about inequality, especially in Spanish speaking communities, one of the first things that you hear to disqualify what that woman is saying is, no, pues, está loca. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah, listen yeah. to her, she's crazy. Yeah, right. true. So the idea is like, you're gonna call me a bitch anyways, you're gonna tell me I'm crazy anyways, so let's just embrace it and let's just be crazy bitches. So that was kind of where we started our course. So when I wanted to do uh, a new podcast, 
under our Locatora Productions umbrella, I knew that I wanted to do something with cannabis. Over the course of the pandemic, I've been smoking heavy every day, wake and bake. It's therapeutic. Therapeutic. I mean, you were also roller skating. I was roller skating while I was smoking. And so I was smoking, I was writing, I was podcasting, I was skating, I was crying, I was being a sad girl. Sounds like a delicious life. Great life, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Yeah, I recommend fun. it. Um, <laughs> quit your job and do that. Um, it was really fun, but also hard. And I knew that I wanted to do something where I could just revel in the life I was living. Yeah. I love podcasting as like a time capsule. And I was like, right now, soy marihuanera. Like, I quit my job. I don't have a nine to five. I'm podcasting full time. I'm smoking. I'm skating. I'm like being kind of a hippie bitch right now. And I'm loving it. Like, this is the life for me. So I, I love words. And I always love the word marihuanera. Like, I think it's so pretty. It is. I think it's interesting. And I thought to myself, I'm living this life. I know there are other bitches living this life. And I thought, what if La Marihuanera was like an archetype? Like this is, this <laughs> like, is an this archetype. Is what, yeah, this is what you this was what you want to strive for. This is a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is a person that exists in our neighborhoods and in our families. And what if we can create our own like lore about La Marihuanera? Because you know? white pot culture has done a very good job dominating it. In the, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like a, and when in, when you talk about the culture within our community, it's always been, you know, criminalization. You know, people forget, like, you know, it was called marijuana back in the day because yeah. it was associated with anti-Mexicanism, yeah. right? You know, and the, and, and the fact that you're owning it and reclaiming it and kind of saying, wait a minute, you know, because it is very main, pot, pot culture is very mainstream. Oh yeah. It's very white and mainstream and affluent and, and you're trying to change that a little, like change that perception. So yeah. what is the reaction been to this for you? Like, what has it opened up for you when you create this archetype? I mean, are there like, you know, pot bitches that are like, let's go, because <laughs> that's what's happening? <laughs> there, are, there are other marihuaneras who are living for it, who love it. I mean, Melina has um, heard Hi, Melina. I'm a, Melina. I'm a <laughs> Melina has <laughs> heard it. <laughs> I'm a huge fan, yes. And I think I really love when there is a lifestyle and and a grace and like this artistic flair like it there's a chic element girl like you're really elevating uh the marihuanera existence yeah. you know and it's it's something that's already there but we are so often relegated to like the shame or to doing it yeah. in the shadows or like exactly. you know like we have texted Sorry, I mean, no, may, you may I show this to my parents? No, but like, Your parents we have texted where I'm like, Mala, I am visiting my sister right now and my entire family's here and I'm acting like I'm 15 because I'm smoking out of the window in the bathroom or like through, or did you do going a paper to the towel garage. Canister with, did you ever do a paper towel canister where you I put used the to paper put, gel out? I have tied before. softener yeah. sheets. Febreze is very yeah. good these days. Like, Wait, how do you know this, Julio? I Because back in the day, as... I wasn't in Medford, I was in Cambridge. Um, in the the and my and I'm totally, you know, my wife my wife, you know, frowned upon it back in the day, but like I was a major like pothead. Nice. So I was a marihuanero, but I didn't know that. So, you know, but Mala, any like this has been great. I'm sorry. This, we could talk to Mala like I want to forever, talk to Mala. like <laughs> about creating yeah. and uh, we have to bring you back because you're too good. We have to bring Diosa and you back because we're big fans of Locatora. Thank so, you. This is the time we, we, we fuck humility, like plug away, tell, tell people where they can find you, how they can subscribe to your podcast. Also sh share like what Locatora is doing outside of Locatora and Marimanera. Yeah. This is your moment. Tell us where we can find you. Thank you. Uh, so Locatora Productions is our indie podcast production house that Diosa and I founded this summer. We're an LLC. Uh, Locatora Radio is our flagship podcast that's been around since 2016. We have over 115 episodes, merch, um, we've done podcast parties and events, and now we're working on trying to produce new shows, hopefully with networks and with studios. Nice. And uh, we are very down to be behind the scenes and bring other shows and other stories to life. I think we have an eye for talent and we have seen a lot of folks out there that we would love to make podcasts for others uh, because I think we have a knack for it. And so we want to just keep building. Yeah. So uh, Locatora is all over 
all the listening platforms, all over social media, locatora underscore radio. We're at locatoraradio.com. I'm at mala underscore Munoz. And my new podcast, Marihuanera, a podcast for potheads, you can find on all listening platforms. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at mala underscore Munoz. I'm everywhere. Look at, she's, Hit me she, up. I mean, the and you even have a jingle. Like, I it's know. in my head right now. The yes. jingle, but also the, but yeah, Marihuanera. But also like, Fight for um, soul, Chris yes. Locatora, yes. Also, like, Locatora Radio. Like yes. That, that. yes. But also, just can we just acknowledge how tight that pitch was? Like that's oh, my honey, thirty. It's what like, I do. So this yeah. is a, they, they hustle. They do it. They We're do. so proud of you. Thank you. Don't ever change. Remember, I said to you, I was like, don't ever change. <laughs> don't change my life. You you can't because my heart will break. Like if you Got change, it. you know. All right, well, Mala Munoz, thanks for being on Latino Rebels. Thank you for having me. Follow everything Locatora Radio and Marihuanera, a podcast for potheads. Do you have the joint? We, is, I think <laughs> we have some in the car. car. No we car. Oh, we got smoke in here? Set. Oh. Okay. Thank you again, Mala. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Mala Munoz. <laughs> I mean, that's this, my homegirl, and she's a Capricorn. So what, this, this is what we sense. call in the interview biz, yes, because yes. I'm in the interview biz. Oh, the biz. What when you have it? a guest like Mana Munoz who just talks. Electric. And, electric. Charismatic. You just sit there and like, I don't have to ask any questions. This is a conversation. Yes. The charisma is undeniable. Right. The banter, I mean. The weed. <laughs> talk, let's talk, talk, that was a big, can I just say one thing? That was a big ass weed talk. I haven't talked yeah. about weed in a very long time. I feel like I'm 23 But again. like, why can't we and shouldn't we? That's a good um, point. I think this is also a social justice issue. It's absolutely connected to any conversations around race yeah. or uh, equity in, in terms of uh, the legal system. Uh, the Carl Searle system, because as we know, and you can Google this, uh, there are brown and black people that have been incarcerated For years. disproportionately. For years. When now we have white tech bros running around making like, I don't know, 90% CBD and 10% THC Not, because like Kool Aids or whatever. And it's like living like their best life. Cannabis like, steaks. No. Oh. Like, it's like, whatever. I don't even know if they're making but, kind of mistakes. Yeah. They probably are. All of it to say, I don't think there should be any shame around it. Yeah. You know, a lot of like, abuelas and tias and tios and papas might be like, Dios mío, but like, we're yeah. not going to do that. It's 2021. Spark we're just... it up. <laughs> How's that? Feel free to send us products and sponsorship. Thank you so much. All right. Another show of Latino Rebels Alive. I want to thank... Melina, again, for being here. Thank for you again. Friend, for, for your friend, co-host, Agreeing Amazing. to be on camera with you. <laughs> which, uh, is, which is, <laughs> there you go. Listen, we, we will be back the next time. We'll yeah. see you. Uh, thank you again for, for supporting the show. And, and, and yeah, thanks for being with us. So yeah. we'll see you. We'll Ch see you. Ciao. Latino Rebels. Yeah.